All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Card Talk. I'm Ryan, joined as always by Tyler and Lou. A lot to get into on today's episode. We've got some questions. We've got some play of the week. We're going to talk about Tatis, his injury, and the impact on his cards. But first, we are going to start with what's on your mind. I think, Lou, last time you said that you've been going first a lot. So we'll continue the trend to switch mm-hmm. it over to Tyler. We'll let Tyler go first. Oh, Ty, we'll start with what's on your mind. I thought, okay. Uh, <laughs> it's not really like, continuing a trend means, but that's what's he now on my mind. He was continuing the trend of changing, of, the, trend. Of changing yeah. the trend. Okay, yeah. got, it, got it, got it, got yep, it. There it is. Yeah. Understood. What's on my mind? The kids' golf game is kind of getting there. It's kind of getting there. Did you figure it out last Tuesday? I figured it out last Tuesday. Found the way. Oh, oh. This was last Tuesday. A couple things. Last Tuesday, we played – uh, a three putt one for a bogey. Uh, it's a stable for match. And then on the second hole, par five, I smoke a drive like 305, figure it all out. Then I hit my four hybrid like 210. I had like an 18 foot eagle putt and the horn blows. And the guys are like, you can't putt after the horn. What? Weather, rain out. It was a it was thunderstorm. I'm like, what do you mean I can't putt this? They're like, you're not supposed to putt after the horn. We got to go in. They were upset. We were coming out hot. They were not happy about it. And then on Friday, I had the opportunity to play with Jacob Truba, mm. captain of the Rags. Mm. Truba and I versus Nate and AJ. Wow. What a crew. Big match. They had our number the whole time, and I finished birdie par birdie. Wow. Dang. That's awesome. Yep. What about Saturday morning? Saturday morning was tough. Mm. Walk yeah. us through that. Walk us through the emotions of thinking you're at the top of the table and actually being at the bottom. I mean, we are terrible. <laughs> I rewatched the match. We're talking about United losing to Brentford 4 nothing, but really they were down 4 nothing in the first 40 minutes. And when I mean they are about as abysmal of a professional team that you can put together at the moment, they're like a bunch of talented players, but they're all shook. I mean, any any, any chance shows. of relegation for old no. Manchester United? Something no. to think about no. is like it's maybe like, some changes you know, need to be made. They've been trying changes. Changes need to be made all the way at the tippy top. That's like, what I mean. The they spent yeah. a lot of money they on that roster. The didn't they? What was the name? What was that like saying? Something out? What's his name? Glazers, the owners of the yeah. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah, Glazers out, right? That was yeah. the thing. Yeah. They play Liverpool uh, a week from yesterday. And they are probably going to get smoked. Don't they have like way. Todd? Isn't their payroll like outrageous? For sure. So it's not like the Glazers aren't trying. So why? Why? Like why are we blaming the Glazers? Because they don't point. really know what they're doing. The Gla- they're not. But they're there's spending no money. Soul at the like, club. Yeah, they're so- spending money on dopes like Harry Maguire and naming him captain. So that right. sounds like more like a coaching thing. Are the Glazers naming team captains? They put the all the people in place, and they're putting all their dopey. So it sounds like the Glazers need to fire the coach and let the coach. The, a new they coach just brought in that. a new coach. It's not that's not how this Ooh. all works. Is I it mean, the Americans? It's that like are the general issue? manager makes the deals. The coach does the coaching. Hmm. The general manager is the head of football. Those are guys. But the are general all manager doesn't name the captains and then blame the general. Like that just seems odd. It's too much to explain. Based mm. on your current understanding of the game, uh, I'm a season vet. Yeah, it starts at the top. That's how it works. What happened with the Mets when the Wilbon sold? They got a lot better. Yeah, the Mets are better. Oh yeah. I don't know. They're having their one of their four best seasons ever to date. That's correct. I heard That's the fact. Yankees are falling apart too. Listen, Steinbrenners are goats, so let it be. That's what's on my mind. F1. I'm excited. I miss it. Yeah, I miss it. Austin, think about Austin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on my mind this morning. Put on my car talk staff shirt. I wish I had one of those. Yeah, definitely, definitely don't have one of those. I have one for you. It's right there. I wonder who else has one. I can think of someone maybe in the stream yard who has one. <laughs> Courtney. <laughs> Two people. Yeah, come, and? come couple people <laughs> yeah. uh what's on my mind this morning 86 fleer oh. um you guys texted me over the weekend about it there was reports that the box 
uh, of 86 Flair we ripped at the National. It was part of Whatnot's biggest sports card giveaway ever. There were reports that the box would have been resealed, tampered with, etc. Box was, from my understanding, box was BBCE sealed and authenticated, sold through Golden and Whatnot purchased it. And so a couple people on the Car Talk page, uh, among other places, had said uh, Card Collector 2 needs to make a public statement apologizing. Uh, this is a big hobby scam he's involved in. Um, and hit hashtag scammer, hashtag repack. So I thought I would get on here and address the 86 Flare packs. 86 Flare came out six years before I was born. I've not one time in my life seen an entire 86 Flare pack ripped through completion. I've never owned an 86 Fleer pack. I've never owned an 86 Fleer box. I own two 86 Fleer basketball sets that I bought because they're iconic. It's one of the best basketball sets ever made. But I don't claim to know it. I've never known it. I've never known it. So when I got on stage and ripped three 86 Fleer packs that whatnot asked me to rip and hit four or five Johnsons in the same pack, made a joke about it being a family reunion, it didn't ring any bells. I wasn't aware of what the collation on an 86 Fleer basketball looked like in 1986, I wasn't alive. I wasn't a thought, nor were my parents married at that time. So the fact that somebody would say that Card Collector 2 is a scammer and needs to make an, a public apology about an 86 Flare pack that <laughs> what not gave away, did not sell, did not trade, did not do anything but give away, seems crazy, right? I, If I would have known, would I have said something? Absolutely. I don't know. I've never one time seen an 86 Flare pack ripped through completion, and I don't know about it. I'm sorry that Drake knew when to expect a Jordan when he got to rip some packs. I'll work on getting more knowledgeable in sports cards than Drake. I apologize, um, but I don't know what I would apologize for. That's 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 the thing. Is It's not like I intentionally got on stage, knew what not bought an 86 Flare box that may or may not have been tampered with, ripped the packs, that we're giving away. It just, it, it's kind of crazy. And I, I can't believe we're talking about something. See, like, I think somebody said it. it I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of like at a loss for words on it, but what, I wanted to address uh, it. Was it, uh, was it fake? I, I don't know. I, I, again, I'm not an 86 floor expert. I'm not going to sit here. BBC yeah. has made a statement saying that they don't have any reason to believe it was tampered with. Okay. There's plenty of reports out there that counteract that. There's plenty of people out there that say, hey, we've never seen this pack ripped in these in this order. Got it. Jeff Wilson ripped packs, sports card investor, Pac-Man, backyard breaks. A lot of people ripped packs. I didn't hear anybody say anything that they were noticed that there was any issues with them. Came out afterwards. Um, yeah, that's it's kind of where I'm at, but wanted to address it. I wanted to give you some room to talk through that because to be honest, it, I it, I didn't see the rip. I apologize. I never, I didn't catch it. I didn't, I only saw the reaction and I only saw the people in our comments who were, you know, who wanted an answer on it. And I kind of didn't totally understand. So I'm glad we gave, I'm glad you gave that explanation. Um, I, I, I don't know how many more times or like how many times we have to say, like, I just don't see a situation where Ryan's doing anything bad. So if something is like something improper occurs or something weird is happening, like, there's nothing on Ryan's end that leads me to believe anything bad would be going on. So I'm glad you got that room to explain it. And I'm just happy we can move past it now. Yep. So odd, uh, odd weekend for sure. Um, but yeah, wanted to address it. Wanted to uh, at least it was a, speak on it. It was a weird weekend in the sports world. There was a lot going on. I almost lost my quarterback for the season. That was tough. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I saw that and I was like, I want this season to, I want there to be optimism going to the season. Like There's it not. makes car talk more fun when like the jets have some chance to be good. Like it would make this more fun. And then when Zach Wilson goes down, I'm like, that's like, that sucks. Like it sucks. I, it's so weird. Like every year, I convince myself that the Jets have a chance to be good, right? No matter what, no matter what's going on, I can always convince myself. This year especially, I had really convinced myself. And we are nine plays into week one of the preseason. And I watch Zach 
roll out. And as he's rolling out, I'm like, he needs to throw the ball away. He needs to throw the ball away. He needs to throw the ball away. And when he went down, it kind of ruined my entire Friday night. Like I, my my Friday night was completely ruined. I sat there in silence for the next four quarters. And then you tweeted paid. like, I am not well. I was so sad because <laughs> it's just like devastating losing. Even there's a lot of question marks around Zach. There's a lot of question marks around the team, all of that stuff. But like, it's just devastating watching your starting quarterback go down and the speed at which I watched every Jet fan on Twitter, myself included, convince themselves that trading for Jimmy G was a good idea mm-hmm. was insane. And we all need help. We need to stop is kind of where I'm at. Like, I think I need to reevaluate myself a little bit because the speed I was like, yeah, no, Jimmy G, we're good to go. Like, it was crazy. <laughs> Lou, what, uh, what else is on your mind? Um, you know, a lot of things. Uh, I would say the main thing is Tatis. We can kind of talk about it a little bit. He was popped for some kind of performance enhancing thing. He said he was taking some kind of ringworm medication and that medication had something in it that was on the banned substances list. I don't know how any of that stuff works really. I do know that there's a very clear list of banned substances and I know that it is very hard to get to test positive and get suspended. So that's tough. Um, Really unfortunate for him. Really unfortunate. I think for, just kind of like the people who spent a lot of money on Tatis and people who believed in him as like a young star in baseball. Um, so that was kind of like the real thing. I just thought it was more unfortunate than anything. He'll be back next year and it'll be fine, but um, very unfortunate situation and kind of crazy seeing his teammates and the GM. Like, I mean, really just bro, like Clevenger and Machado, like what they were they not, they, they didn't say very couple, nice things. A couple guys who maybe don't have the cleanest track records talking a lot of crap about somebody's, uh, like morality. That's yeah, Mach- Machado saying Machado saying, "Hey, we got it this far without him." Clevenger saying it's not all about him. Like it was there were some there were some statements. It was wild. It was the GM was the one that hurt the most, I think. He pretty much was like, "Yeah, we invested a lot of time and money into him and he just keeps making mistakes." Which is not wrong. I mean, he like got in a motorcycle accident 2 weeks before the season cuz he's just being silly. I mean, to tease, correct me if I'm wrong, right? If Tatis is healthy going into the season, pre this season, right? If he's healthy, no motorcycle accident, he's got to be one of the faces of baseball. 100%. Like top three. Like it has to be up there, right? Yeah, 1,000%. Like Acuna, Trout, Tatis, Soto, Acuna, Tatis. Like it's got to be up there. He's in the group of like Soto, Tatis, Trout, Otani. Otani, yeah. Yeah, like that's the crew that he's in. mm, That's like the crew he's in. What do you mean? mm. (laughs) <laughs> I don't think coming into this year, Aaron Judge is one of the faces of baseball. He is Next at year, this maybe. moment. Yeah. Yeah. But I think he's collapsed into oblivion point, as expected. The, the point for Lou is, is fair, though. I said before this season. Yeah, I was talking you, about preseason. He was a judge in there. Um, Mike Trout, because we're talking baseball and you guys are going to make me fall asleep over here. Uh, Mike Trout is oh, just like all of a sudden again. a big card collector. Oh, yeah. Big time. Like just. Ripping packs, pulling his own autos. Is he going to be flipping them on eBay or something? Yeah, listen, I think uh, he took the time off the rest of this year because he just wants to get really into, like, eminence. He's just going to start ripping eminence every day. Should we get Trout on the podcast? <laughs> sure. Mike Trout. If Come anyone card that's talk. listening knows of Mike Trout. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Just let me. Sh- let's just shoot him a text real quick. Uh, and then about Zach Wilson, I don't think you mentioned it, but – his first play, he yeah, tied the biscuit over someone's head by <laughs> 10 feet. His second play, he threw the most simple stare down, a little sit route in a fucking covered uh, defense. There's that, wasn't, that wasn't even jumped. My man just walked in to that pick. Uh, and then when he scrambled, you were saying throw it away. I was saying I need a little bit more of that. And no. he gets up and he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> we need no none of that. No more of that. He needs to be the number one thing that then now we're just talking jets. I'm sure Ryan's really into that. The number one thing that we need from Zach is like safer decisions. Mm-hmm. And you know, the the like a stare check down, down in a two three zone or whatever we're talking. Cover a little two. check down, just throw it away. Like you're rolling out, just go like one of these, you know, just just you know the good out. news is is Lou 
for those listening, Lou did start a podcast about the Jets. So there's more Jets <sighs> chatter if you're looking. We're going to move on here. We can't bog down car talk with baseball and Jets chatter. People would leave. Fair enough. That's uh, true. But if you're looking for more Jets talk, Lou and his, uh, his, his good friend Greg have started a Jets podcast. Thank you. Um, so as a as a transition, how about the U.S. Open of tennis starting up? You know the Rumble in the Jungle. They got oh, the bash. When did it start? It's not it hasn't started yet. It's going okay. up. Uh, it's always Is a kind of end of summer thing. Serena's last one. Serena's last dance. Alcatraz takes on the Big Apple. Alcaraz, not Alcatraz. I was just out in San Francisco. I drove by Alcatraz. That's why that was on my mind. Uh, but the net pro set that we've probably talked about on this podcast for like two years. The last year and a half we've been talking about this set. <laughs> is, is coming to fruition. Finally. Is that kid going to have autos in it? On card. So that was the ones that I sent, right? The ones yeah. that I – those are – they kind of – they're pretty clean. They are honestly. super clean. Um. I'm interested to see what the price point is on that. I'm interested to see what the interest level is on that. I wonder if there is any plans for a release date. Because they should release it around like a big tournament, right? That would make more. I think the U.S. Open. I think it's coming out. They're releasing it like next week? I think it's coming out in the next two weeks. Holy cow, Jason. Ten days. That's interesting. I did not know that. Yeah. Ty, do you think there'll be demand for it? I do. I definitely do. Like more like golf demand or more like lacrosse demand? Not I saying there's not. Those, to... I would put those demands in similar categories, maybe. But like, I'll say this: the most asked about card that from content I put up at the national was the Mikey Powell Jim Brown <laughs> dual auto. It's the most increase I got on that card. Wow! I want it bad. It's not mine, Jim Brown. You know who that is? Mm-hmm. It's a football player. Easy now. Lacrosse player as well. Oh, I, I knew that. I was played at Syracuse in the Lacrosse Hall of Fame on record, saying lacrosse is his favorite sport. Played at Syracuse. And then Mikey Powell, who for my our generation was like the greatest, the goat, like the guy. Oh, it's like a also dual played at auto. Cuse, dual auto. That's cool. Jimmy Brown, Mikey Powell. And the the kid who has been submitting to the lacrosse stuff on play of the week, who I met yep. there and was Upstate talking for ten minutes, da, 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 played lacrosse in college with my cousin. Really? Yeah, that's I wild. Huh? The whole time. Small world. So yeah, that's my story about lacrosse. I think there will be some demand for tennis. I'm and I don't mean next. that there's not demand for lacrosse. I know there's huge demand for like lacrosse, but it's not like. Wow. Yeah, it's I like guess fringe. It's huge. It's like yeah, it's fringy. fringe. There you go. It's fringy. But like, I, I just hear more about like golf product, golf cards through, you know, card social than I do lacrosse. So I'm just, I was trying to yeah, get an I idea. Yeah, I think golf like, is bigger than lacrosse. Let's see. I think golf cards are bigger than lacrosse. I would put tennis up there with golf, maybe potentially bigger. All right, let's get into let's get into some of the questions. We have a couple of these before play of the week. We're picking them. Uh, yeah, Jason, a couple. I think there's a good okay. one right here to start. Uh, okay. It's Nada underscore Sad Life. Love the oh, that's my guy. Uh, he says, "How much do you think preseason games actually affect the card market?" And I think this is important because Lou, I think you wanted to talk about um, talk about this, so I'll let you start yes. this off. Yeah, I think. The thing that made me think about this, not the thing, like the thing that comes to mind with this, is apparently Kellen Mond has gotten some some love in the card market oh. in the last twenty four to forty eight hours based on um, his week one preseason performance. I don't even know what the numbers were. All I know, and no disrespect to Kellen Mond or anyone who is a Kellen Mond collector, or Texas A and M fan, all due respect to all you guys, that guy is probably not going to be an NFL starting quarterback on a consistent basis this season or next season or probably the season after that. So I would just recommend everyone be careful. There definitely is an effect. People get excited. I think, you know, Isaiah, I think Pacheo is how you say his last name, the guy on the Chiefs. If that guy had cards right now, I'm sure people would be going nuts for those because he's about to become the running back in Kansas City. We saw it with CEH. People were excited about him. Like, it definitely has an effect. I would preach patience and also wait and see 
And also, if you're going to make a purchase, go on in line and check and see if their stats weren't against third stringers and guys who are undrafted free agents before you start making decisions on purchases, especially when they're $100 plus a card. Something to monitor there. Just wanted to put that up. Put that up. Yeah, I think to answer the question, it definitely affects card prices, right? Like Zach Wilson stuff wasn't hot when Zach Wilson went down, right? Like Kellen Mond, Kyle Trask, some of these guys have big games. I can tell you, we notice an uptick in offers on their cars on eBay. When who is you guys' boy on Tennessee? Malik Willis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so had a Malik Willis auto get clicked this weekend. Just somebody bought it now. Is up for buy now or best offer? Somebody just bought it. He is. He's going to be the starter. It's going to. He's going to take that Tannehill job. That like, one he's going to. You said Kellen Mond is going to be the quarterback of the Vikings. That's a wild statement. I think Kellen Mond will get playing time. Do I think Kellen Mond is like talent, super talented? No, I just you know what you have in Kirk Cousins. At some point, mediocrity can't keep repeating itself before you move on. I truly believe this clip. We're going to look back, and yeah, this neither is a quarterback one. is going to play like. A meaningful a snap all season. I I would unless say, there's injury, there will be no snap. No snap. No. You snap. just know what you have in Kirk Cousins after what three years. Yes. You just at you know some what point you, you move him. on. Doesn't no, matter. That money's gone. Like you, he's never gonna win you games. You're not playing for nine and seven or nine and eight every that's year. You're not, not playing for that. No. No. I think that's you're not how it works. When you commit that much money, the downside of Benching your quarterback, going to a random rookie. Yeah, the fans are going to be really pumped about that. Well, they sometimes look at the you know what you look got is exactly sometimes what you, you want. know what you got. They're talking about trading for Jimmy G. Look at they're paying Baker. Look at they're paying Brissett. Look at they're paying Deshaun. Like the Browns just you. And look the where the have, Browns have been as an organization for a very long time. That's not what have the Vikings, Vikings done? Any, what have the Vikings time. done any different? But they've been a I mean, the, much more meaningful organization than the Browns. The Vikings are better than the than the Browns. Sure. How many playoff games are the Vikings going to win this year? Zero. Probably more than the Browns. Yeah. How many of them are going to win the, the same 10 amount? years comparatively? Like, it's how you run an organization. Just because you think the quarterback's not going to win you a Super Bowl, you don't just put him on the bench for some dude great named Kellen Mond. Yeah, great I, take. I'm not saying – I'm not here to argue that Kellen Mond is good. I'm just That's arguing – You came are. on and said that both Ryan Tannehill and Kirk Cousins are going to be benched because of a – quarter of preseason football from some dopes i think malik willis is talented that's the difference with ryan Tannehill. because he can run a little bit against third string guys what, no, malik willis what is, is good what has ryan Tannehill shown you that's like hey this guy's our franchise guy okay he was one interception away from being in the conference, one conference championship last year come on brother come on they lost their first game they had a buy and lost the reason they had their buy is they had the best running back in the league for eight games true mm-hmm. They're Can winning we, in spite of Ryan Tannehill, not because of Ryan Tannehill. Got it. Throw the rookie in there and see what what happens. I, I would love that. I would root for the Titans. Speaking of because rookies of a playing narrative, well, not because you know what you're talking about. Speaking of rookies playing well, shout out to Desmond Ritter. Had a fantastic debut. I was pumped about that. Hoping wait, he gets wait, minutes this year. Third string or not third string? I'm no, just, he he the had like, got to the argument's got to be the same for Kellen Mond, Kyle Trask, Desmond Ritter, Malik Willis. Like we just got to keep saying the boy look good. He didn't like, come why out and say that Desmond Ritter's all of a sudden gonna be the starter in week three. Yeah, he, he might. I mean, you know what you got, in Marcus Mariota. I I know yeah, what you're better. saying, right? But like, there's a little bit of a difference between Ryan yeah. Tannehill and Kirk Cousins. Uh, uh, oh, really? I think so. Meaning, really? you think Kirk's a far superior quarterback? No, I think Kirk has way more staying power than Ryan Tannehill does. Uh, uh, man, I, I I don't view them that. I think you're sleeping on like Justin Jefferson, Dalvin Cook. Like you're you're like throwing those guys out the window. Those guys are really good. So is Derrick Henry. Like I, you think that Mike doesn't make Grable Kirk Cousins good? Is going to some random rookie quarterback? I don't know, guys. It's early. This is the whole point of the question. It's too yeah, early to react to these things. I think Week One has more impact than preseason. Yeah, I would agree. Meaningful NFL games. But but I think the argument is that you see potential in these guys in preseason. That's what drives their card market up and down. Like Malik you, Willis coming out. More often you see a good performer off the bench get cut than have an impact their regular season. Uh, that on, on average across the board, that is a fair statement. I would agree. This isn't for everybody. This is 
Desmond Ritter's a good backup. I want to buy his stuff throughout the year. Malik Willis is a good backup. He's going to play at some point. Kellen Mond is a good backup. He's going to play. Like that's what this argue. That's what preseason creates that you wouldn't get in week one. Kellen Mond's not going to play week one. It's going to be Kirk Cousins. True. Right. So you're not going to see that preseason. So they need, what would need to happen for them to switch quarterback? Zero and five. Zero and six. I think zero and six. You're putting Malik. You're putting Kellen Mond in. And you, you think lose. the Vikings are coming out three, they're six. Them. What? No shot. They're pulling them at zero and three. I I think zero and three. Then then you go zero and nine real quick. Like I mean, zero and six. You're six weeks into the season. You're one of the bottom two teams in the NFL. You have C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young next year. Your season is over. I just you don't need know to know where if, you're. You're you're assuming the Vikings are going zero and six because you saw two good. Snaps that wasn't the, the question. That wasn't preseason. the question. You that said question. when would they pull Kirk Cousins for Kellen Mond? Six yeah. weeks into the season, if they haven't won a game, they will pull him. You Correct. need to make a decision six weeks in if you haven't won a game. If Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud are worth playing for. Because if Kellen Mond wins you the next 11 Ryan, games, Ryan, back to my original point, him. you believe that this individual is going to take over the quarterback job, which means you believe the Vikings are going to go 0-6, which is a crazy <laughs> thought. Do you, think, like, do you think the hypothetical 0-6 Vikings is not even a conversation worth having? <laughs> it's yes, not, I it's do. Not a conversation. No, it's but not it a conversation worth having. You think Kirk Cousins is going to get benched. Like that's your take, at, which means that at you some think the point the Vikings are going to at some point the Vikings are going to move on from Kirk Cousins. He's not going to do enough. You're not wrong. True. At some point, the Patriots moved on from Tom Brady too. No, that's actually not true. Tom Brady moved on from the Patriots. That's actually not even close. To yeah, to say. <laughs> they tried to move on multiple times. Let's go next. All right, All let right. me as a follow up. Let me just get right back into this quarterback conversation from. Uh, Collect it, Miami. Ask Ryan to apologize to Hertz and purchase a grail of his. Noted. Why were you burying Hertz? Noted, Jalen Hertz. Yeah, oh yeah. We've, Ryan we've been we've been burying Hertz for a while. Yes. Hertz, I I said it a couple weeks ago that Hertz is going to be the guy I'm going to be wrong about because their schedule is easy. Hertz Hertz has far uh, again. We asked this question last week. Who would you rather have Hertz or Tua? I could not like Tua less. Me Could too. not like Tua less. I do not like Tua. I do not think he is good. I do not think he will be good. Uh, I stand by that. And, and if I if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Like it won't be the first time I'm wrong, right? Like, um, but Hertz plays in a, a far uh, a far inferior division. Like their their schedule is one of the easiest in the NFL, I believe. Like I, I think Hertz will have potential to succeed and win games, and that will affect his cards. Um, I have a couple Hertz cards in case I'm wrong. Not super optimistic, but I'm far more emotional hedge, Jay. The emotional hedge. Yeah, emotional hedge. So say, listen, like because you're you're apologizing because he played well against the Jets for three drives. No, because he actually was good last year. Oh, I'm not apologizing. That's what the the question was insinuating. Apologize to Hurts because yeah, no, scored two touchdowns against the Jets. Yeah, win. Best defense. Start start six and zero. Let's talk. Like there's just there's a lot of football. Not everybody can win the Super Bowl. Not everybody can go to the playoffs. Like, not everybody's going to be a starter next year. Like, it just at some point, teams move on. Would you buy Mahomes right now? I don't think the Chiefs are going to win the division. I think the Chiefs are going to have a, a lesser year. I think the Chargers are really good. I think the that's the best division of football. I they like Mahomes. They, they lost third. Kafka. Mike, they lost their guy, Mike Kafka. Yeah, you know? tough, Where's tough our Kafka again? New Giants. York with Danny oh, Dimes. Yikes. It was like I 20 love, minutes down the road. I like, I love my Kafka. I man, I hope yeah, it works yeah, out. I'm, tough, I'm, yeah, I'm not buying on. Project. I'm not buying Danny Dimes. <laughs> project. <laughs> but they lost Tyreek. They lost, you know. Listen, if they give the ball to Saquon, the Giants yeah. or the Chiefs? I'm so confused. The Giants. The yeah, Chiefs just, lost their top three receivers. They lost Pringle. They lost Hill, and they lost. Um, yeah, they have the best tight end in the league. What was that other guy? He's getting a little. I think by one. They also signed Marquez. They also signed Marquez Valdez Scantling and Juju Smith Schuster. I mean, those guys aren't worthless. Yeah, they're not Tyreek Hill, Hill, but they're better than Byron statement. Pringle. They're trying to make a statement. It's a good place to go and try to make a statement. Mahomes is one of the most talented quarterbacks in the league, though. So it's like Brady and some of the guys he had each year. It's hard to count him out when there's that much talent. Like Brady took no name guys to the Super Bowl. Yeah. It, so it, if the Chiefs go to the Super Bowl, we've done this before. The Chiefs panic meter. Where is it at? Right. Like we've had the Chiefs panic, panic meter. meter. It's a lot more reactive than it has been in years. We're going to be 14 weeks in. The Chiefs are going to be you know 10 and four, and we're going to be like, well, we were wrong again. Like they just somehow figured out every year. And 
Tannehill's last three years in Tennessee before hitting the bench. 3,700 yards, 21 TDs, 14 picks, 89.6 rating. 3,800 yards, 33 TDs, 7 picks, 106 QB rating. 2,700 yards, 22 TDs, 6 picks, 117 QB rating. Just perfect. Okay, just let me ask you a quick bench. question. Let me ask you a quick question. Did you watch your playoff game last year? Yes or no? Yeah, it's it a one series game. of three. It was a terrible game. He played terrible. <laughs> yes, you watched the game. Number yeah. two, do you think he's the reason they lost the playoff game? Uh, probably so. Yeah, yeah. I okay, do. that's two yeses. And now three, do you think they drafted a quarterback in the third round or wherever, whenever they drafted? Malik? I think it was third, right? Third. Uh huh. Do you think they drafted Malik Willis as a backup to Ryan Tannehill or as a potential replacement? A potential replacement when his contract runs out. <laughs> okay. That's it. Yeah. Lou, you would make an excellent lawyer. Thank you. I, uh, I wasn't even making a statement beyond just I wanted Tyler to acknowledge that Ryan Tannehill was the reason they lost. All right, the let's, let's get into some more He's questions. He's paid this year and next year. Ty, let's get and into some questions. And then they're going to let him go. We're going to clip this later, just like MPJ Comeback Player of the Year in 2029, brother. We're clipping it. It's going to be on record. Ryan. Yes. We can find a lot of clips, Ryan. <laughs> we could. We can find a we, lot. We can find of a clips. lot of clips. Yeah, absolutely. I I we asked could. people why they were buying Josh Allen. Like, uh, I've got I've had some terrible takes. I'm not saying that, but like at some point, I'm like, you know what? I'm wrong. Not like MPJ for MVP. You watch one quarter of preseason football and you think a quarterback's going to take over. <laughs> That's not what the question was. But uh, next I'll question. Watch, Shout I'll out to Not a Sad Life for really yeah. bringing like 20 minutes of conversation. We should probably get to play of the week. Uh, real quick, I want a couple more. Rapid fire. Which would you rather rip? One hobby box or the equivalent of blaster in mega boxes? Hobby. Aligned. Aligned. Hobby Aligned. for sure. Oh my gosh. There are some terrible questions on here. Yeah, there are. Bad ones. Uh, very bad. Uh, lots of talk about Ohio versus New Jersey. This is from Ian Wilsey. One person from each state. State your case in the tar- card talk court. I think the difference between New Jersey and Ohio, New Jersey, number one, has New York City, which I'm not even the biggest fan of New York City, but we have New York City right to our our east. Is that so right? Your, your, your best case to start off your conversation is that a city that's not in your state is nearby. Yeah, that's a big piece that's of the puzzle. That's the selling point is that, hey, we're cool. close to New I'll York. I'll start with this one. It has one of the most – Desirable stretch of beaches in the entire. I was world. that was the next thing I was going to it was like in the entire world. Jersey it also Shores. has one of the most unsafe cities in America. In Doesn't Weaver Ohio? Houston. Ohio has like a river that's on fire, isn't that like the whole? Ohio river hasn't been on fire in years. None. I'm just saying, you guys had a river on fire. Three major cities were a. One day Three truck drive to over fifty percent of the Your US understanding of we major have pig, is we have a the pig barn show. We- okay, your understanding of major is like a, a suburb is like <laughs> no, you don't have major. New York has major. You're not New York. Three this major is cities versus Ohio. This is Three major this cities. is New Jersey versus Ohio, not New York versus Ohio. Oh God. Your state is so bad, you try to claim New York instead. We don't try to claim anything. It's just a fact you're, of the situation. You're claiming that. No, that's what you just said. Hey, we're close to New York City. You're, that's not even in your state. That's your argument is, hey, we have I would New rather York go City. to New York City than Cleveland. Next question. Yeah, but that's not in New Jersey. So I'd rather <laughs> be in New York than in Ohio. That's a, yeah. that's a different argument. What about New Jersey versus Ohio? Yeah, bagels, pizza, Taylor ham. Thank you, Jay. Yeah, I mean, Columbus has all those, and they're better than anything Atlantic City has. Yeah, for Cincinnati sure. and Cleveland is the equivalent to Newark, New Jersey. There's a reason. <laughs> play of the, there's a reason Ohio okay. runs play of the week. We're just it's a better state. Yeah, they have. You guys have nothing better to do than sell cards because there's nothing going on. Impact, you guys don't impact have anything in to the do. world. You go to New York. Impact in the world is non-comparable. The things no that way. happen in in Newark and Patterson, Wild. the history of Wild. this country compared to Ohio. Wild. Facts. Facts. Uh, and Patterson, conversation. New Jersey, Zero Patterson, New Jersey chance. is a cornerstone of this nation. Zero percent chance. Two of the best five basketball players all time are from Ohio. That that right there alone, like absolutely dominant. New Jersey noted, Bruce, noted Bruce nothing going on in New Jersey for basketball. Nothing. Don't know anyone. Couldn't name one. LeBron and Steph Curry. I mean that that alone. I mean dominant. 
dominant. Kyrie, yeah, that makes a ton of sense. I mean, Kyrie's pretty good. Yeah, he's wild. All right. Uh, last question. Best fantasy football team name for this year? I'm going to I'm an not... original over Dwayne Bow. That's a classic. I'm going to be real. This whole, like, I actually think corny fantasy names are, like, the worst. I've had the same fantasy name for 14 years. Joe Pomluck. <sighs> what, what is that? Blue. Like, stick, create a franchise, create a brand, stop Googling for your fantasy name, bring some originality to I mean, the Dwayne, table. over Dwayne Bowe's been, you know, that's that's 13 years in running. I mean. um, I actually like the corny fantasy name. I think it's kind of funny. It's also definitely corny. Like, I get it. But anyway, um, I don't know. I have to think Respect. about the name. So that's a little bit of a tough, it's a tough sofa. What? Oh, Court. Come on, Court. Come on, Court. <laughs> Courtney's, Courtney's name is Sofa King Good. So that's Courtney's fantasy name. Respect. I got to think about a name. I'll come, I'll come correct next week. It took me a little longer than I Just watch The Simpsons, YouTube all the prank phone calls that Bart made to the bar. There's some good names for you. I've never watched The Simpsons. Really? Not my thing. Simpsons was... I was more of a South Park kid. Top. Yeah, South Park yeah. is... Definitely proper. more Simpsons. Way more Simpsons. Yeah, it's very high. All right. Let's uh, shout out to everybody for the questions. There's some good ones. We obviously got some great uh, debate out of that. Uh, always love to see Tyler sweat about some of his uh, Tyler Schmidt's 15 greatest athletes um, in his takes. We love we love having those conversations. So shout out to everybody who submitted questions. Um, but let's get into I – mean, let's get into play of the week. Unnecessary. All right. This no is comments from, from Jay, by the way, about the uh, veracity of this week of play of the week. So <laughs> we shall see. Yeah, we're finished. All right, this is from super underscore sports dot cards on IG. It says my play this week. My play of the week is this crazy one on one Robert Covington game worn patch from Select twenty sixteen. Little backstory: I had some extra cash from selling some cards. I posted on my story that I was looking to buy rare pieces, one on one SPs, etc. A little later in the day, I get a DM from a guy who has a one on one gold vinyl Matt Ryan. I ended up picking that up, but we're here for the Covington. After that deal is done, the next day he DMs me with a sick Robert Covington 101 patch. There are barely any comps to go off of, so we really don't know what the value is. He offers to sell for 60 bucks. I take it in a heartbeat. Fast forward, I receive the card in the mail, post on eBay that night for 500 bucks or best offer. Within 12 hours, I get an offer for 200 bucks, turn it down. Couple hours later, I get a $350 offer. I'm assuming he sold. Makes Robert. sense. Would make sense. I would sell. I would have sold it at two hundred, but <laughs> heck of a play. He sat on the, it. He sat yeah. on it. Oh no, he didn't sit on it. He turned it down. Yeah, he turned it down for two hundred and sold it for three fifty. Turning it down is bold. I would have let it simmer. That, that's what I said. At least like sleep on it. I don't know. I feel like if you get an offer immediately, you can kind of tell. You feel good. More. There's more coming. You know. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> It's a good read. It's hard to turn right. it down. Next play, Jay. All right. This is from uh, is SA, SA oh, Collectibles. Nice. The art of grading, selling, the art of trading, grading, selling, and perfect timing. A few weeks ago, we were vendors at the Dallas Card Show. Gentleman came up to the table with a Lamar Jackson Immaculate RPA at a 15. Wasn't really interested in selling, more interested in trading. He mentioned he was a big Niners fan, so I showed him a few Trey Lance RPAs. He decided on a Trey Lance at a 22 first off the line was worth about 700 and $350 cash. I figured the Lamar had great potential as he's a mark as his mark is low at the moment. As soon as we completed the deal, I took the card over to Beckett for raw card review. A few hours later, the card was ready. My girlfriend went to pick it up as she was walking back up to the table. So was Roth. We were all witnessed it coming back in nine, five with a 10 auto. I was excited. I showed it to Roth as he seemed interested. He went back. We went back and forth on a number and agreed to twenty five hundred cash. All into it, I was in to the deal for a thousand ninety dollars, seven hundred card, three fifty cash, and forty dollar grading. Brings in total net profit to fourteen ten in about four in about four hours. It's a good breakdown of like how it's done, you know, like in person making a deal, finding a card, all the details there too. I mean, who he, yeah, his girlfriend picked it up, who he sold it to, yeah. I mean, detailed that's, that's how you do it love seeing that that's a nice auto by lamar by the way credit to lamar yeah good looking on it 
number eight on there. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of simple though. I mean, just LJ number eight. I mean, make, the number eight looks awfully big. Let's not give him too much credit. That's not no, that's no Ken Griffey just, Jr. Derek Jeter. You're just going after Lamar Jackson for no reason. I'm trying to give him a little bit of love, trying to add some positive energy to the submission play of the week. Yeah, I mean, this play is amazing. Lamar Jackson. Yeah, I'm actually, autos, a I think four I'm, out of ten. I think I'm big on Lamar this year. Many are. It's a tough division, man. I like the guy. It's not that tough. Yeah, Lamar's yeah. That's it's probably middle of the pack, right? Yeah. I think probably top four. Yeah. Great play. Love it. Yeah, agreed. Next play. Shout out to the Dallas Card Show too. Shout out. Shout out Leo. Uh, oh, this is crazy. I, man, this is wild. Uh, Drake's underscore PC. Shout out to Drake. He is, is that a ex- gold PSA 10 rock prism. Yes. Like he's an, he is a car genius and yes, a very nice, very nice guy. Yep. Hey guys, love the show each week. My submission for boy of the week is a bit different than most. In 2004, I bought a LeBron James SP authentic nine, five, 10 rookie auto for $679. The sale even shows up on Card Ladder sales history. A few weeks ago, I posted it on my Instagram page just to share. Well, someone reached out and asked if I was interested in trading that for a Rock 2022 Prism WWE Gold out of 10 PSA 10 and cash. As someone who considers myself more of a wrestling card collector and a rock collector than a LeBron collector, this was a no-brainer. I'd be giving up a card at a 500 that I could reacquire again in the future if I wanted to for an out of 10 in a PSA 10 slab. We settled on the rock in $15,000 cash for the LeBron. Total value of, of about 48.5, resulting in an ROI of 7,043%. This proves that not everything has to be a quick flip and that sometimes holding long-term can pay off big. Go Hogs, and Tyler still owes me a Woo Pig Suey from the beatdown the Razorbacks put on the Nittany Lions back in January. That's fair. How do they say it? Is it like Woo Pig Suey? I think it's a little bit more of like a, a longer enunciation like a woo. of Woo. There you go. Like Woo Pig Suey, like that? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, I got it. That's what you get. Woo Pig Suey. Like I'm the rock <laughs> on the top rope. Um, this is a big (laughs) suey, but hold up. Logan Paul and the Miz are bringing wrestling all the way back. I don't know who the Miz is. Some may say it never left, but it, they're making it super cool. I don't know if the Miz and Logan Paul are bringing wrestling back to its prominence, but they had a great match. At some, you're talking about SummerSlam? Yeah, I'm talking about like, wrestling is hot 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 yes and those two dudes are really in it i agree logan's awesome i respect logan for a lot of reasons the way he just throws his body into wrestling is very interesting and cool big respect for that agree this 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 uh, i was just gonna ask this courtney this is an important question because i think it would be i want your opinion before i say anything the answer is yes is Logan Paul going to be in a future WWE product? For sure. He was in the video game. That seems like a major card. I would agree. Right? Like, Lou, you agree or disagree on that? I agree. I agree a lot. My question was, I don't know if he has the same deals as everybody else because, like, McAfee hasn't been in WWE products yet. Fair. Good point. Was McAfee in the video game? I don't know. I know he's a full-time part of programming every single week, though. I'm going to text Logan and ask him right now. <laughs> that would be crazy. Question from Card Talk, Card Talk Pod. Shout Will you be in any WWE card product? In the future. Um, I do. I want to say about this trade really quick to give Drake some love. It's first of all, it's very funny that that's a card ladder. It's kind of cool to look back on. 679, which means he pretty not even. 15x he like 25x his money right off his initial from 2004 which is amazing and he got a rock psa 10 gold which is a very difficult card to come by um love the rationale i'm like hey it's another 500 lebron i could probably get this again in the future if i really really want it um it's a great trade a fun I, trade 
Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Fun, right? This is what a collect- real trade. Yeah, what collecting is about. Like, he's a wrestler, like a wrestling collector at heart. To get a card like that of The Rock, that, like you said, that's a major card if you're a wrestling collector. The Rock, Prism, Gold, PSA 10. Like, that is, for a wrestling fan, that seems like a pretty big card. Big card. Um, In general, big card. The Rock's a big deal. So to trade a card like a LeBron, I mean, that's a staple LeBron rookie. I mean, that's a, that's it's a, a big card. That's a big LeBron rookie card. Um, yeah, 48, yeah, just, 5K. Yeah, like, that's, a, that's cool. It just It's cool to see trades like this. So mm-hmm. very, uh, very. When's very the last cool. time we saw a trade on Play of the Week? It's been a minute, I feel like. I, uh, like a big trade like this. This is so sweet. Yeah. Could you imagine? First off, 18 years from now, my ass is going to be 49. And this man's bought this card 18 years ago. Damn, that one hurt, Ty. That one hurt heavy. But it's pretty cool, one, that he can literally see the transaction. Yeah. It's a nice job by Card Ladder. The patience is crazy. I'm over here thinking, what do I need to buy right now for 18 years from now? Yeah, what are you buying for 18 years? All right, one card. You have to hold it for 18 years. What are you buying? Wow. 52 mana. I guess if we have unlimited cash flow, I meant more. What like, do you want me to buy? A fucking under. I don't know. I meant like in the six hundred seventy five dollars. Let's call it under a thousand dollars. Yeah, let's call it under a thousand dollars, and I gotta hold it for eighteen years. Yeah, I really want to say Malik Willis just out of spite. <laughs> <laughs> Respect. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, to give my guys from Football Quest some love, I went on their show yesterday. I think I sh- would be able to find a very strong Darrell Revis rookie mm. card for under a thousand dollars and i would feel comfortable holding that for the next 18 mm. years for mm. some upside because if he's the best cornerback of all time which he is feels like i'm gonna upside. i'm going to say so my man said you either like make a bet on a prospect or you go legend and let it yep. play out yep i would take the best pat mcafee card i could find for a thousand dollars i like that I don't hate that. I'm going to say Carlitos Alcaraz. Wow. The tennis player? Yep. On wow. Carlotto. Wow. That's a fun game. That's a fun game. We ought to do that. Each get a thousand yeah, that's bucks. A, that's a clip for this week. Yeah, thousand. That's a card you would buy for under a thousand dollars. That yeah, you feel hold comfortable for I would love to know from some of the audience too. So Jay, if we can drop it on IG, have yeah, some of the audience. Clip this week. Have some mm-hmm. of the audience drop. What would be the best card you would buy for a thousand dollars to keep for 18 years? Next. That's a big play. That's super cool. Wow. Oh, this is from J and J dot trading. This is going to be a play right here. Uh, immediately from the release of Topps Chrome Star Wars Galaxy, I thought it would be a smash hit because of how popular Chrome products are and the huge Star Wars Disney collectibles market. I thought, or I bought, sold, opened tons of this product, but always went after one card in particular. The Leap of Faith card. This is the cover image for the boxes and bears the image of Luke and Leia together in an iconic moment from the first film. In February of this year, I grabbed a Leap of Faith Atomic Refractor. It's a cracked ice looking parallel for $34.88 shipped off of eBay. Held for a while, letting the set build and graded it with PSA. Got a 10. I then sold the card at the National for $750 cash. All in, including grading, shipping, and taxes, I was in for roughly 150 netted 600 after the deal was done. The best part, I was able to give the profits to my fiance to help fund her upcoming amazing wedding. That's amazing. That's Cards to wedding is always a proper play. Sure. There's really something here with Star Wars. We've talked about it. I still think the Sapphire, like, I don't know. Cool looking card. I missed. Uh, I didn't miss. I had an OG Luke Skywalker, but... We should have been all over this product. Yeah, we didn't activate it to go. Um, that's a really nice prism refractor. Big fan of that. Yeah, me too. And there's you know, another. There's a Mandalorian uh, Chrome coming out. I I don't want to be like negative, but it might crazy. Are there major print lines in that prism refractor that's got a PSA ten? There are two. One on the bottom. One across. The and middle. there's one that runs just by his arm. Yeah, on his elbow. I mean, there are three major print lines in that card for a PSA 10. I only see two, but... There's one right across the middle, right through his head. Yeah. There's one towards the bottom the of the card. down, right? And then there's one that runs up and down vertically oh, right next to his it. arm. right off of his elbow. And maybe that's just the design. I mean, is that part of the design or those major I print no lines? Clue. I would think it is if it's a PSA 10. Yeah. 
but maybe yeah you're right who knows yeah cool card cool parallel cool 10 no cool story love the wedding play yeah classic wedding play smart yeah the mandalorian chrome best card edition is coming out soon all right next play jay oh man this is a lot oh wow this is from holy underscore city underscore cards it says two totally oh, free Two totally free plays for the National. Was intrigued by the Stranger Things promotion at the Zero Cool booth at the National and stopped by to wait in line for about an hour on Thursday and about two hours on Friday. Went back again Friday afternoon and waited in line for almost two hours because more people at the show had seen the cards and knew the drop was limited to 50 people each time. Ended up with five packs between my dad and I. I've only sold four of the 10 cards so far, netting 153 with probably about $300 worth of cards left. After shipping and fees, I made 143. Not bad for a free play that while waiting in line, we also swapped back and forth waiting and doing eBay scavenger hunt, which yielded $50 in eBay gift cards and five DJ Ski National cards that netted $244 after fees. In total, we made $437 totally for free. Who needs trade up challenges when you can just get free stuff? We've talked about it before. We'll continue to talk about it. The free giveaways contests yep. at the national are crazy. Yep. Free money. Limited print, FOMO. It has everything you would want for cards. By the way, this Stranger Things 2022 set, I gave my cards to somebody. I kind of regret it. I wish I graded. <laughs> I kind of like where that Stranger going. Things set. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where mine are. There's some, there's some energy. Jay, is there any more? I think that's it. Another. Wow. Another one. Okay, this is from Real Jake Grasso. It says, play the week submission. I came across a seller on Twitter who had two numbered LeBron slabs for sale. I PC LeBron, so of course I was interested. One was an 07 Bowman out of 399. The other was an 07 Topps Letterman out of 599. He said he would do 45, I mean, $45 for the pair. Are you kidding me? <laughs> of course I accepted. Asking prices for the Letterman were about 125, so I knew I was going to be able to make my money back. Sold the Letterman for 100 after fees got 89, doubling my money on one card alone, and now I can keep the other for my PC. Yeah, if someone's going to give you a, a deal like that, you should probably just take it and flip well, the other. PSA sevens, and he still got a hundred dollars. Holy yeah, cow. that's crazy. LeBron is just safe. All right. Doesn't get much safer. Nice shot, Jake. All right, a relatively good good uh good week this week. Strong week. I'm picking Drake. Man. Yeah, it's simple. It's easy. There's some good plays. There, there are, are some good really plays. good ones. I like the wedding play too. As someone that's done that before, that is <laughs> that is uh, a heck of a play. Follow yeah, I would say guy. it's Lamar, Drake. I mean, my man bought a Robert Covington patch for sixty dollars and turned down two hundred just to get three fifty. Like that's that's that's, that's kind of crazy. That's energy. Too. My mom, oh, my man, bought energy. two Lebrons for forty five dollars and sold a PSA seven for a hundred. Like, this isn't a this isn't a slouch week here. Definitely not. But yeah, I'm going Drake. I'm Let's going go. the gold. I'm going trade. I'm going it's big for Drake. Eighteen year keep, like eighteen year keep, and it sets us up for the question. Yes. Who are you buying under a thousand? Stashing for eighteen years. Yeah. Shout I will Drake. say it's probably. I mean, at the time, it wasn't a small purchase. No, six seventy. No, that's real cash. Imagine yeah. buying one of those for six seventy five. I'm still having it, man. What a guy! What a play! All right, last but not least, as we wrap it up, we've got latest launch. You've got finest uh, Bundesliga soccer. You have Obsidian basketball, extended series hockey, and officially the Topps Chrome PSG set, which sold out for about twelve thousand dollars, I believe. And is reselling for around twenty thousand dollars a box, guaranteed. Neymar, Messi, and uh, Mbappe, Mbappe, right? Mbappe autos. Um, guaranteed. So I think they're guaranteed in every yeah, single I box. Think it, yeah, I think it's full set. Yeah, it's like forty cards set. Hold on, I haven't looked enough into it. I think it, every box has it. It's kind of less fun. Yeah. So. Uh, this is from Blowout. It's like a picture of the Tops info. It says, for the first time in history, Tops has partnered with PSG for an exclusive high-end trading card set. 
Crossover between Europe's biggest stars and Topps iconic Chrome brand, this 40-card set is stocked with rare hits and on-card autographs, including the first Kylie and Mbappe officially licensed autograph card, 20 sequentially serial-numbered base cards, and 20 sequentially numbered autograph cards per box, limited to 270 sets. So it doesn't say specifically that you're guaranteed an auto of every one of those players. I thought I don't that was think what you're it was. guaranteed Mbappe. Because I remember seeing something online saying that Mbappe be... covers the cost of your box, but if you don't get Mbappe, you you take an L. That would I would love to know more about that. So if anybody knows, I would actually love to know if that is the case. Any answer from Logan before we sign off? No. Damn. Real quick, let's I want to double check. Are there any sales in Mbappe autos? Has anyone looked? I haven't looked at all. I will check eBay real quick. No sales. A set sold for $22,500 or best offer three days ago. That's crazy. So. All right. Wow. Shout what a week. To, shout out to everybody listening. Excited to talk more Malik Willis, Kellen Mond, and uh, Joe, Joe Flacco. Flacco. Yeah, Joe Flacco next week. Joe Flacco delivering those softballs when it matters and those zippy balls when it matters as well. Yeah, tough quote from Garrett Wilson at the end of the week. Anyway, goodbye, everybody. See you guys. Yeah, your receiver buried our quarterback. Peace. Peace.